Hey guys, and welcome to another ICH2 video. I've got a review for you today, as you can see from the video title. But before I get onto that, I just wanted to do a tiny intro on why I've got this and why I thought I'd buy this particular set, set it up in here and film it and review it. If you can cast your mind back to various mailbox episodes, um, I've been sent in some wonderful stock, some wonderful rolling stock, many, many, many items. And some of those items um, are Engage, but I don't have an Engage layout to run it on to speak of. The Engage project that was done in the office has been ripped up, ready for the entire office to be moved downstairs. So that's no good anymore. And um, in the meantime, I still need something to run Engage stuff on. If you can recall, there's an Engage HST, we've got an Engage Black 5 with some LMS moving coaches. And there's even um, uh, an Engage DMU and a shunter. There's a class 58, as you know, loads of hoppers and all sorts of stuff. Seriously, all sorts of stuff all everywhere. So I thought I'd get an Engage set. So if you <laughs> grab the Graham Farish 2018 catalog, you can see in the front of that that there's some really rather nice um, Engage train sets coming out at the moment. So here it is. This is the Nightmail train set in Engage by Graham Farish, which is by Batman. And you've got to admit, it looks beautiful. It looks absolutely stunning. And what's of special note is that the Class 47 that you get in this set is exclusive to this set. It's limited to just this set. So if you want Doncaster Enterprise, <laughs> Uh, class 47 number 522, you've got to get this set basically. So that's really special. Well, it's a beautiful set. It's a really nice package. It looks really, really fancy. I've just spent several minutes trying to find everything there is to find out about it on the back of the box. But actually, on the back of the box, there's not really anything about this particular set, which is really odd. But it tends to be, it's, it looks like it's a generic load of information basically advertising all the different sets you can get, how to expand them, and where to buy the parts from. If you actually look at the side of the box, that's where you'll find all the information you need about this particular set. So that's obviously on the lid. And so I think that's Backman basically cutting down on production costs and making sure that they only have to change the lids every time rather than the entire box. So turning it around to the front end, we can see that it says, Britain's railways have played a major role in the transport of the rail mail from the very early days of rail travel. Overnight trains would speed the mail from one end of the country to the other. The Class 47 in distinctive Doncaster Enterprise livery makes a striking sight with its rail mail train at dusk. And the Class 47 in particular looks beautiful and I've not got a Class 47 in Engage at all. It's got working headlights. I bet the buffers are probably sprung as well, knowing Batman. So it looks like a fantastic little look. I can't wait to take a look at that. On the top of the box, it says the night mail, ready to run with track and controller. So it is a complete set. It's not just the train. You do get a leap of track, well, an oval, and you obviously get an analog controller because it is an analog set. There's no DCC here. Although again, knowing Batman, knowing Graham Farish, this is probably DCC ready. So you get the Class 47, two coaches, uh, the wall transformer, <laughs> the controller, and then an oval of track. The oval of track is quite simple, it has to be said. It's literally just two huge sweeping curves and then two tiny little straights. That's it. So very, very basic. But it's easy to add to that. It's easy to put in sidings and to make it a double track layout. It's really easy to add. And the instructions are even included on the back. Well, I'm sure you've had enough of looking at me for five minutes, so I'm going to get onto the other side of the camera and show you exactly what you get inside and then set it up and run it. Okay, hey, and thanks for joining me on the other side of the camera. I do prefer this side of the camera. It's so much easier, so much simpler. Right, so look at this. I mean, seriously, the box is exquisite. So this is what I'm on about, how everything is basically on the lid. And I think this is Batman's clever way of keeping production costs down. You can see that they've got a diagram of exactly what you get on the side, a very brief description, a beautiful piece of artwork. Well, it's a photograph, isn't it? So this is just, um, well, my theory really is backed up. Just look at this. 
talking about generic boxes being used to keep costs down, we've got an entire section here that's completely empty. But it's okay, <laughs> there's no need to panic. Batman very thoughtfully put a little sticker in there that tells you exactly what you should get, just in case you open it and shock horror, think something's been nicked or something's not been put in. But no, it's fine. We've got the loco, we've got the two Royal Mail coaches, there's the Transformer, robots in disguise. And then we've got some uh, cabling, the track, and the very, very basic controller. And it is basic, it does have to be said, but it's very well built. Seriously, the quality of that one is so much better than the quality of the analog Hornby controller you get. But it is basic. I like it though, it's nice. So, what shall we look at first? Let's get the boring stuff out of the way first, shall we? So if I just lift this tray out, we should have some gump. There we go. I remember that's the technical term. So expanding your layout. Gosh, they really are pushing this, aren't they? Um, I thought it was just Hornby that did this, but Batman have really gotten into it. Whoa, there's half a forest here of paper. Okay, expanding your layout. So again, they're really keen to push this and Basically, they want to sell you additional kits and sections and boxes in order to make your layout even bigger. And that's fair enough. So there's a little advert there for a new controller, the Dynamis. Um, the, there's even a little advert for Scenecraft, which is basically all their buildings and streets, uh, street accessories rather. Oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, that actually barely fits in shot, but that's a poster you could put up on your bedroom wall. And that is, wow, I mean, gosh, what a scene. It looks like a, a TMD. It looks like a traction maintenance depot of some kind. So very, very nice indeed. And then, yeah, Wooden Scenics. I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with that. Um, so it's all the realistic, realistic foliage. We've got um, all of the scatter grass. And then, as I say, those are the different track sections you can get to really simply expand your track. So we've got a loco sheet here on the uh, Brush Class 47, um, or Type 4, I think, as it's also known, Type 4 diesel. Um, and Batman have always been really good at this stuff. So they tell you exactly how long to run it in for. They tell you where you need to apply the oil and how much oil to apply. And I was right, it's DCC ready. So they even give you details on the DCC chip to use. And obviously because it's N-Gage, it's only a six pin chip, which is very basic, but it will do the job. It will control the lights for you. So it's worth considering if you are running a DCC layout. And then on the back, we've got this exploded diagram of a Class 47, just in case you need to order any replacement parts. This is quite nice. There's a little feature here on what to do before running your train. So it's, I mean, it really is great for beginners. It's basically telling you how to connect the track, how to not connect the track. It's telling you how to plug the power in, how to connect it up, how to not electrocute yourself. It's really, really nice. I mean, you literally could give this to anyone that's just starting the hobby and they would be absolutely fine. So that's really quite a nice touch. Oh, and then of course, uh, the Batman Collectors Club and the product warranty. Uh, boring! Right, so getting back to what's actually exciting and the reason we're here. We've got the loco, two coaches, what should we look at first? Let's take a look at this loco then. Okay, so again it's sealed away in this sort of block of ice. I think it's going to want me to open up one end actually. Yep, it is. It's quite tricky, it's quite fiddly. Okay, so once you've taken it out of that first layer of plastic, there is a second layer which just slides off, and then hopefully that is going to give us, yep, oh, I can feel it, I can touch it, that is going to give us access to the Class 47. Okay, so take off a little bit of paper. And we're back. Apologies, yep, uh, I have mentioned it in previous videos, this camera is obsessed with laminate flooring. But finally, I've managed to get it to look at the, um, the loco itself, and it's beautiful. Just look at this. It really does blow my mind every time how they manage to get so much detail crammed into such a tiny package. Look at that. Okay, so the buffers aren't sprung. 
and that's a bit of a shame. But we have got metal handrails, and that is phenomenal. I can't believe that. I mean, look at that, that's tiny. We've got window wipers. There's an antenna on the top. There's horn detailing, buffer beam detailing. Those are the working lights. The livery is beautiful. You can even feel the lettering on the nameplate. And of course, it being a Class 47, it's a Coco wheel arrangement. Um, I don't know if the model is, like uh, in terms of actually being powered. I'm assuming it's probably a centrally mounted motor with a couple of flywheels. I would have to open it up to have a look. But there's no traction tires. That's good, because they just perish. So that's really nice. It's seriously, this is one beautiful little Class 47. Look at all the detail on the roof. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice that. Fan grills, exhausts, cooling vents. So yeah, very, very impressed with that. Absolutely beautiful little logo. And I'm sure it's going to run fantastically. Let's get a look at the coaches. Ta-da! Okay, back to autofocus. And the camera is looking at the floor again, so it's happy. Right, a couple of coaches here. This is the first one I'm going to take a look at because this is the big one. This is the, the this has got really fancy lettering on. I quite like the packaging though; it's quite nice. And I should just point out that just like with the Loco, um, they've included tiny, tiny little bags of accessories with each um, item of rolling stock. Maybe it's vacuum piping. Maybe it's coupling mechanisms. It could be coupling actually. I'm not too sure, but whatever it is, it's really rather nice. And you don't have to use it, of course, but they've included it should you wish to. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna notice then, actually, is, well, to be honest, the camera is looking at the coach. It's lost interest in laminate flooring, which is, I'm not gonna complain about, it's quite nice. But, oh my gosh, it's so light. Seriously, there's hardly any weight to this at all. Um, I think I would probably want to add some ballast to that, I knew the affair wouldn't take long. The camera's fallen back in love with the laminate flooring. So let's just correct that. There we go, as if by magic. Now I should just point out at this moment, the heavens have once again opened for the 247th time today. But um, I'm gonna continue and hope that you can hear me just about okay anyway. So the detail on this coach is beautiful. Look how the light reflects off those windows for a start. Look at the red, it's absolutely spot on. Look at the golden lettering, the stripe at the bottom. Even the uh, coach detail at the end. We've got a couple of buffers that you could probably oil up and make to look really realistic. Ah, oh, tiny little wheels. Engage wheels are so cute. So yeah, it really is a beautiful coach and it's a very typical Mark I coach, beautifully reproduced. My only qualm, as with almost anything Engage, is that it's probably a bit too lightweight. But at the same time, obviously you don't want to make it too heavy because the, the Loco could really struggle to pull it, especially if you've got inclines on your layout. But I don't think it would hurt to take this top part off and maybe add just a tiny little bit of weight in the center. I think that would be really good. Liquid Gravity is the one I would recommend. It's easy to get hold of in your local model shop and you can literally just apply it to the center of the coach and it will make it stay on those tracks really well. Okay, final coach then. There's only two included, but you know, that's good. It's better than one. So again, there's another little pack of accessories, another little bit of paper, and this coach is nowhere near as interesting, but equally beautiful, really well produced. It's definitely Mark One. it's the same Actually, gosh, no, it's not even the same. It's not the same dimensions, it really is shorter. It's a, it looks like it's a dedicated parcels coach. Wow. That's really good. We've got detail on the end. There's a tiny little door there on the side. That looks marvelous. Of course, there's doors all over it. There's a wheel on the bottom that they've even painted white. Sorry if the focus is struggling to uh, show you everything. I'm trying to keep it in this sort of weird zone in the center where the focus remains. 
Yeah, so again, a beautifully reproduced coach. And technically, it is called... Well, technically, it's called a Mark I Gov. It's just really lightweight. That's it. That's all I would say. It's really lightweight. Again, I would want to uh, take the roof off or take the body off, however it comes apart, and maybe add a little bit of liquid gravity to the center just to make sure it stays on those tracks. But all in all, very, very nice indeed. Right, get everything out of shot but this. And the reason for this is because I've got a little bit of a bonus for this particular set and this particular video. And that is one of these. So I got this at the same time. This is a Graham Farish um, Focus. There we go. This is a Graham Farish Mark I covered carriage truck in BR Express Parcels livery. And it's even been pre-weathered, apparently. Although I shall have a look at that in a moment. And the reason I wanted to get this is because, well, as I've said, it is only two coaches that you get with this set, and that's not very many. So if you can add a few more, then it's going to make it even more interesting. So I grabbed this, and this is what they had in the shop at the time. I thought it was rather lovely. Um, but just as a little nod to all those really serious modelers out there, you can run this. I've checked. So this particular coach, remember, it's Express Parcels, BR Livery, Engage, and it is there. Okay? Focus. Thank you. So you can see it down there in the bottom left. And it says it's era, it's era 6 and 7. Okay? But then fast forward just a few pages and you find the Royal Mail ones, which are classed as eras 8. Although there's one over there that's 5 and 6, bizarrely. Oh yeah, you can see that the text there is different. That's totally different. So basically, we've got an era 8 coach, and this is 6 and 7. But it's okay, because seriously, um, it's very, very likely that at the time, this would have been drafted into service if it was needed. They probably had them lying around in um, sidings unused, and you know, not everything got resprayed at the same time. Not everything got reconditioned at the same time. There just wasn't the time or the money or the resources or the staff. So if they needed something seriously, they would have whacked this on the train without a second's thought and put it into use. So basically, it's totally okay to run this with this particular train. What's not okay is to do it the other way around. So if you're running a BR era six and seven layout, a coach such as this would very unlikely, it would be very unlikely for this to travel back in time and suddenly appear on the layout. So remember, it's generally okay to do it in one way, but generally definitely not okay to do it in the other way. So we're going to have at least three items of rolling stock on this particular train, and that should be awesome. Okay, getting back to the set, it's, it's quite um, basic. I've already covered the backbone controller before. Okay, so here it is. It's analog, completely analog, DC only, folks. But it's really, really nice. In fact, oh, look at that. They've even added a little click to it. Look at that. <laughs> as he says, as he breaks it. Okay, but yeah, this feels solid. It's really well built. It's really good quality. So much better than the Hornby ones. Um, yeah, that's really good. So you've got directional control at the top, a little light to indicate whether you've got power, and then, of course, your actual gauge, your controller. So really nice. Does the job. Can't wait to set it up. And seriously, I don't think there's a need for me to look at this. That's literally just a transformer. And then you can see buried down there. Oh, get off polystyrene. Down there, all right. No, it's still on me. Oh, flaming static. Right, so down there, you've got a couple of straights and then the eight curves required to make the oval. So, ow, my ears. Without further ado, let's get that oval built.
Welcome back. Um, I tried to do that as quickly as I could. Um, I, again, I hope that you're not being interrupted and disturbed too much by the, the rain. The weather really is quite atrocious at the moment. But it's done. And look how tiny it is. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. You could, like, you could put this in a car. Every car could have one. Every kitchen worktop, every desk. It's tiny. Absolutely adorable. Um, I've wired everything in. Oh, actually, no, that's just come off. I've just noticed. There we go. Okay, hopefully the contacts are making contact with the track. There's so little weight to it. It's really, really hard, actually. But let's get this loco on and just test that the loco runs okay. Here we go. Pick a direction. Any will do. Give it some juice. Um, nothing. Maybe we've not got a contact. Hang on. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. We're back. Okay. Yes, there was. It has to be. It has to be said. There was an ever so slight technical glitch over here with the clips. I don't like them, um, but obviously they do do the job. I think if you're going to set this up properly, you can't beat actually snipping these clips off and basically soldering the cables directly to the rails. You can't beat that. But for just a train set, getting it going, setting it up and off you go, yeah, the clips do the job. You just might have to ever so slightly bend them into shape to make sure they make contact. So obviously this clip on the left, or your right, we've got connected to one rail, and then the other clip is making a contact on the other rail, obviously, otherwise it's not going to work. But the loco is running, the Class 47 is definitely going around, and you can even see the lights. That's really beautiful. Such a quality little mechanism. Such a beautiful loco. So we'll just let that run in for a little bit and then we'll put some rolling stock on and see what that looks like. Okay, it's been a few minutes and seriously, this Class 47 is running beautifully. It is such a quality mechanism. But we didn't expect anything less, did we? I mean, the Graham Farish stuff by Batman is wonderful and it is running beautifully, so I am very happy indeed. It's very, very likely that the BR Network Express parcels uh, wagon would have gone first and then it was probably the actual Royal Mail liveried coach. Um, just get those to couple up. <laughs> Don't want to play ball. Thank you. And then finally, the GUV parcels van, basically. So we'll get that on as well. Okay, there we go. That is probably how it would have run. So we'll get this loco to back up onto that. Look at this. It just reverses so smoothly. Now it might not couple up. No, it's not going to couple up straight away. Oh, so annoying. In fact, it doesn't want to couple up at all because everything is just so lightweight. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, engage, it's not perfect, but it's done, it's coupled now. And I've got to say, it does look beautiful. So yeah, seriously, isn't it just beautiful? I mean, just look how good that is. Such a smart Class 47 and such a lovely little rake of mail train, basically. Right, without further ado, let's get her going. Just look at that. I mean, I know it's really small. It is, it has to be said, but it's just so cute. And it looks so nice. Let's get down really low. So there we have it folks, that is the Night Mail train set in Engage by Graham Farish, which is by Batman. And it's beautiful, honestly, it really is beautiful. We had a little bit of um, difficulty with getting the clips to make sure they transferred power to the rails, 
But that's just because, you know, everything's so small, everything's so tiny and lightweight. Um, and they're, they're, they're problems that are easily overcome. It's, it's certainly not worth, um, you know... Yeah, it's certainly nothing uh, worth putting you off buying the set. It's, it's only a minor thing. Um, the Loco is beautiful. The rolling stock is top-notch, like really quality stuff. And, wow, <laughs> I mean, just look at it. It's, it's fantastic. Every desk, every office, every car, everywhere in the world needs one of these. It's just wonderful. Hey peeps, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.